What is up guys? It has been a minute since I've made a video actually, but today I've been really excited to make this video and today we're going to dive in to show you guys everything that you need to build a Raspberry Pi for your car. So I'm not going to show you guys how to build the Raspberry Pi. I'll throw all of the links down below that I use to show. There's actually a guy on YouTube already that explains and walks you through how to build the Pi, how to download all the software on there. And those are the videos, links that I used to actually build my Pi. Super simple and he does a great job explaining how to build the Pi. Basically what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be throwing all the links down below of everything that I bought to build my Pi, including the screen, the Raspberry Pi itself, um, and some other components that you'll need to build the Pi. So the reason that I built a Raspberry Pi was because I was kind of going back and forth with like how do I want to display my gauges in my car. I already have a boost gauge and I have an AFR gauge um, which the Raspberry Pi can display too because it's running off uh, Mega Squirt which is running through Tuner Studio which we'll get into a little bit later. But basically is I don't have a my coolant gauge or temp gauge does not work on my car and tachometer gauge doesn't work right now on my car so I had to buy a temp gauge which if you want to buy like a pretty decent gauge or a gauge pillar it's going to cost pretty much a little bit more than this whole setup um, or can cost around the same thing and I was like man this is really cool I can tune on the fly and um, this is just a better option for me so that's why I decided to build a Raspberry Pi. I um, haven't really ever built like a computer before. I guess that you could say like this isn't like extensive like building like a gaming computer or anything like that. It's a small little computer. Um, so I was pretty new to it and um, I was like, man, I guess it's the first time. So I'm going to go ahead and try. I had some help uh, from Yanni because he did have, uh, he did build one for his car as well. But he gave me all the links of everything that I needed to buy. And uh, basically that's what I'm going to be going over today. And I'm going to show you guys how I set it up in my car. So getting right into it, the whole cost for everything just for the Raspberry Pi stuff that you're going to need is going to cost you about 120 bucks, which is not too bad if you compare it to like other gauges that you have to buy. Um, and like I said, the gauge pillar before. So what you're going to get is you're going to get a Raspberry Pi screen, which this is going to connect uh, the Raspberry Pi itself. The Pi will connect to the back of this screen and, um, like I said, I'll drop everything down below in the description for all the links. Next is, this is a case um, that you'll get with the Raspberry Pi. Uh, or this is another thing that you wanna get. This is a case that includes the Pi and the screen. Um, it's a nice black hard case that, you can, uh, that you'll get. Another thing that I didn't include in the $120 price is, this is just, you want a slim keyboard and you want a Bluetooth keyboard. Um, I just got this one from Walmart. It was like 15 bucks and you'll want to do this because the Pi doesn't have a keyboard. It is touch screen, but you'll want to uh, have a Bluetooth keyboard so you can actually type and tune on the flyer if you have to do anything like that. And now I actually don't have the box for the Pi because I actually already threw it away, but it literally is probably like a box like this size and the Pi comes in that. And then from there, like I said, I'll throw all the links down in the description below of how that you're gonna be building the Pi and adding all of the software and operating system onto the Pi. So another big question that comes up is, how am I still gonna have a radio in the car? Because the Raspberry Pi is like seven inches and it's a pretty decent size to fit in that tombstone area. Um, so there's gonna be two options that you can go with. So I went with, uh, I, I bought this, which is the option I was going to go with, which is an amp, which allows you to still have an aux cord. Which, which this would be behind the Raspberry Pi and it would still allow you to have like the climate control module in there if you still have air conditioning or anything like that. I don't have air conditioning in my car. I don't even have a blower in my car. So I was like, um, I got this just in case I wanted to ever go to this, but um, this is gonna be the amp option where you can still have the climate control and you can run the Raspberry Pi and just take your radio out. The option that I went with is I took out the climate control because like I said, I can, I can I can always put it back in or I can just use a uh, wire up a switch for my blower um, just because I don't have AC in the car and I don't have a blower currently. I probably will put one back in just because uh, just for raining and all that like blowers needed in the car but I went with just putting the Raspberry Pi in there and just leaving my head unit because um, that was the best viable option because I wanted Bluetooth still in the car to play like uh, songs and like radio and stuff to connect to my phone. Other than that guys, like it is a pretty simple setup and it doesn't take too long to build. Like I said, everything that I just discussed will be in the description below. All the links um, to the Raspberry Pi, the screen, the case, 
the amp, um, I mean, for a keyboard, you can just find one on the Amazon too, just make sure it has Bluetooth, and it's pretty small too, because like you wanna keep it in your car. So other than that, um, let's go ahead and go downstairs and I'll show you my setup. So one more thing that you guys are gonna need is something to power the Raspberry Pi. So you're gonna need something for power, which is you're gonna need at least three amps or I think it's like 2.5, but this uh, specific one that plugs into the cigarette lighter is uh, 3.4 amps that I have, and it gives it enough power to start up and run and everything um, for the Pi to work. So basically getting into my setup, you guys can see like uh, you got boost here, AFR, and this is just goes into stock vents of a Miata. Um, and then this whole thing is the tombstone. Well, usually you have the climate control settings and then you have like the radio below that. And what I did was, so this is a modified tombstone and I'll show you guys, this is a stock tombstone on a Miata. Well, a screen's not gonna fit here because the Raspberry Pi has a big back on it. So what I did is I bought another tombstone and I cut right here and I cut right here and I cut this middle beam out which then allows the Pi screen to sit up here where the climate control settings used to be and that's actually the climate control right there uh, module that I took out. And then I just, and this is usually where the radio goes and I, you can see that I still have my head unit in here and uh, there's still a little bit of space in here where I can put my phone and everything but the Pi sits on here nicely. How I mounted it is, I'm definitely gonna be changing this in the future, but I did Velcro, and it's really on there. The screen doesn't move at all when I drive hard or anything like that. And I did Velcro because I can always take the screen off, like on and off if I have to get behind it or if um, I have to move the screen or fix the Raspberry Pi like that. So it, I definitely like it because it is removable. But like once the Raspberry Pi is in there, all it needs is you're gonna have a power um, which is gonna be USB to, to plug into the back. So it's got only literally two wires and one of them is a USB from your mega screw into the Raspberry Pi and then the other one is the power cable and those are the only cables other than, those are the only cables that you need to actually power the Raspberry Pi. So I'll show you guys the startup um, of the Raspberry Pi. So I'll just turn it, turn the key on and uh, you'll see like it, the power is coming on. You can see my radio is coming up too. Um, the Pi does take just a little bit to start up. Other than that, it's like super quick um, and it doesn't take that long. But basically what I did too is I made uh, Tuner Studio come up automatically so I don't have to keep clicking on it every single time. Um, so it just boots up automatically uh, Tuner Studio. So it's pretty cool. And all I have to do is click one time to um, upload my tune um, just to see everything from my car and all my gauges. As you can see, like it, it, it wasn't too bad and all I have to do now is I have to go over here and just click open my last project. It will load it up. And there you go guys. As you can see, like those are the live settings right now for my car. Obviously, like it's it's pretty cold. It's only 82 degrees because the car has been off. Um, and then you can change the, the gauge cluster as much as you want, all different gauges. Now, if you do pay for Tuner Studio, this is just the free um, application. You can actually buy it for like 60 bucks or something like that. And you can do different gauge setups and everything, which is gonna be cool. That's probably what I'm gonna do because I really want like a big tack or something like that or a tack in the middle. Um, but this is pretty much all you have to go with the free version, which is completely fine right now. Um, but I mean, I've loved it so far. It's been in the car for a little over a month now and it's been working so awesome compared to just having like a laptop over here um, and like the seat. I also forgot to mention too that uh, the reason that I wanted to go with the Raspberry Pi too is because I can actually tune on the fly. It literally is like having a computer in the car connected to your Mega Square at all times. It's touch screen and it's so much better than just having gauges too because like I said, you can tune directly right on the fly if you have any issues on the track or any issues anywhere that when you're driving the car, which is a huge bonus. But if you guys have any questions, definitely throw it in the comment section below and I'll be answering any questions that you guys have because I definitely had a lot when I was trying to build it but uh, as always GPG if you like this video if you thought it was helpful definitely give it a big thumbs up and as always GPG peace out guys and see you guys in the next one